Since school has been back in session for over a week now, we thought it was about time for a field trip. Destination, the Northeast Mycological Federation foray, or in translation. We spent four days doing nothing but mushrooms. This is mushrooms only. Mushrooms and the people who love them. Attendees include hobbyists. This is just what I do for avocation, not vocation. And legends. I'm an author of the Audubon Society Field Guide to North American Mushrooms. But all seem to agree. What's not to like about a mushroom? So, you know. Participants attend mushroom lectures, do mushroom crafts, talk mushrooms, eat mushrooms, wear mushrooms, and most of all, hunt mushrooms. Yeah, we, we typically call it a foray. If you're looking for just edibles, you're foraging, but most of us are, are foraying, meaning that, that we're looking for edibles, but we're also looking for funny little inedible, rare, unusual, or beautiful species. A foray is a treasure hunt in the woods. That's Bill Ewell. I'm from Connecticut. I'm a teacher and uh, a mushroom hunter. Beautiful. So mushroom hunters, they have a picnic basket of some kind. You know, every sport has its gear. This is my mushroom knife. Oh, that's a spectacular little mushroom called the chestnut bolete. See, I like stuff like this. So those are the pores of this polypore, and there's a whole drama of nature going on inside in that little minute dimension. Back on the bus, there's a lot of sizing up of other people's baskets. Then the bounty is brought back to the conference hall. Uh, everyone is trying to sort them, identify them as best as possible. We typically will get a few uh, mushrooms that are new species. Here are, are mushrooms that have been pretty definitively identified, and they're out on the tables, they're grouped by family, by genus, and it's an opportunity for people to come and take a close-up look at these mushrooms and actually see what they look like, what are the characteristics. And in what kind of woods or near what kind of trees they were found. Basically 90% of the trees in the world actually have these mutualistic relationships with mushrooms. But that's on the down low. Many of the mushrooms that we eat hook up underground to these trees. The tendrils in the mushroom's mycelium, that's the vegetative underground part of the mushroom. They hook up to the roots of trees. They give the tree water. They give it trace nutrients. In exchange, they get sugars from the tree. And certain mushrooms tend to have relations with certain trees. If you want morels, you go to some place where it's very calcareous, maybe where, a place where there are a lot of elm trees. The uh, chanterelles, for example, will typically be on uh, steep slopes, um, often near beech trees. Right? If you're looking for the porcini, you typically go off uh, looking for spruce. I started out with an interest in what was edible, and I moved to, oh my god, these are gorgeous sorts of things. And then I found that they are a key, I mean, for me, they are a key for unlocking all the mysteries that I've always had about how things work. Uh, my background, I, I used to be a high energy physicist, so I was searching for the grand unified field theory, right? So when you go out in the woods, it doesn't look like things are unified, right? But the reality is we know that everything is connected, and the mushrooms are an integral part of that. The grand unified theory of the forest, with fungi as the Higgs boson. Too much? For Science Friday, I'm Flora Lichtman.